Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father through our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horeb Lutheran Church in Chapin. And each day, Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to dwelling with you in the Word. Today is a Saturday and it's February 20th. And this is the first Saturday in the season of Lent. We've begun the 40 day journey uh, towards Easter as we begin this time of uh, growth for our faith and intentional focus on who we are as a people of God, who and whose we are, we like to say. So blessings as we gather today and read God's word. Um, today we're going to look at Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 through 13, but also just want you to know that each day we use uh, the, the Bible verses from Christ in our home, and in our church we've used a devotional booklet called Places of the Passion, which also provides a daily uh, devotion as well as a reading uh, in there. And in that, just drop this, in that we encourage you, we put a bookmark in our mailing, but this is a bookmark called Faith Five, and it reminds us of the five practices that we're encouraging our members to do each evening, just for five minutes or 10 minutes with your family, or if you live by yourself, maybe call somebody up and have this be kind of a ritual each day, but just to share your highs and lows of the day, uh, read a verse of scripture, maybe using one of the devotional booklets, talk about the connection maybe, have a faith conversation, Pray with each other and then bless each other, basically saying, hey, you're, you're a child of God. God loves you and blessings as you go to bed tonight um, and know that who and whose you are. So hopefully that will be helpful for you. But let's look at today's words from Matthew. And after getting into a boat, Jesus crossed the water and came to his own town. And just then some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. And then some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say your sins are forgiven, or to say stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And he stood up and went to his home. And when the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God who had given such authority on heaven to human beings. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I've come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So this is a quite insightful passage from Matthew's Gospel, but what jumps out at you when you dwell on this passage? What questions might it raise for you and your faith? And what nudge might you feel for your own faith journey this day? The part that jumped out at me was uh, Jesus' response. Why do you think evil in your hearts for which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or say stand up and walk? And maybe one of the reasons why that jumps out at me a little bit is just uh, because I sense... Uh, in the observation, maybe lately just on media or talking with certain individuals or watching people, that sometimes um, because of the pandemic we're in, because of the pressures of life and responsibilities we all have, there is a part of us that gets crazy under pressure that we tend to have this sense of feeling as if we're out of control and we want to respond in a way that sometimes isn't helpful or pleasing. We're frustrated. And it may come out that way. I don't think we think evil in our hearts. I think we're just being human and having a human reaction. And so part of our faith really helps us to, to see that um, there is a, a way that we are to respond. Yes, the, we, we as humans react in a variety of ways and we have all kinds of emotions. But God is there to help guide us and lead us in a way that says um, those things may be natural for you to feel, but but there's also this way of faith, and the Holy Spirit is a guide for us. 
And so it helps us with this struggle. You know, Luther noticed that struggle all the time. We have the saint and sinner in us all the time, and we're constantly wrestling with how to live faithfully. Um, so I thought about that passage today and just how we respond to things, to people, to circumstances in our lives based on what we're experiencing. This uh, devotional booklet, The Place of the Passion, talked about Matthew 1 today, and it emphasizes kind of the genealogy and this kingship of Jesus. It talks about one who has all authority, calls us to discipleship, and then gives us everything. You know, he dies for us. Uh, and so it's in him that we die to kind of this old way of living, and we rise to a new way of living, a new life, so to speak, one where God's authority lives through us. And it does so when we model compassion. Um, and so then in the lesson that we just read, we see this authority exhibited uh, in the healing of the paralyzed man. I mean, not everybody could do that, but there was something there that happened. And we see the response um, th that we're called to have when he calls Matthew a little bit later to follow, stop what we're doing, to follow him. Who, you know, after encountering Jesus, Matthew leaves behind an old way of living to follow Jesus to live anew. And it's all about faith. Believing in God as a creator and a redeemer and a sanctifier, or we like to say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God in three persons. Uh, and this is our new perception for our lives. It's the new heart that we're to have that helps us to focus on everything else. It's our new identity. Um... And it may not change what we do for a living, but it does affect the way we do what we do for a living. Um, so we are called to channel um, compassion. You know, the thing that was exciting about this passage was that he saw the faith of the friends who brought the paralyzed person to him to be healed. And so it, I had a teacher one time that asked me about a passage like this was, sometimes we feel like the one who's paralyzed and Jesus heals us. But sometimes we might be like the, the friend who brings someone who's paralyzed or hurt or he, in need of healing to Jesus. And so we can see ourselves in a variety of roles here in this passage today. So as we channel this compassion, we give obedience and evidence of Jesus in our, our hearts. And so I hear those words again. Why do you think evil in your hearts? Which, for which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? When we think um, compassion instead of evil in our hearts, something happens to us and to those around us. Um, and so that's a good way for us to maybe share. Uh, when we talk about this Faith Five every night, when we share, read, uh, talk, pray, and bless, spend some time just talking about a high or a low from your day or a God moment. And just pick it apart a little bit and and talk about what was happening in your heart when you had that high or that low or that God moment. And how was God's compassion and love experienced there? And pray for that to happen in your life. Because um, I think how we perceive things makes a difference. I had a favorite comedian of mine. He's still around, but his name was Steve Martin when I was growing up. Uh, in his early stand-up comedy years, uh, he would often play the banjo uh, and one of his bits uh, shared how he, it was hard, he said, to portray bad news on a banjo. And he used to have a little thing because it, he said it was such a joyful and uplifting instrument. And so he would play a sad song and then play it on the banjo. And it said, it's just hard to hear the bad news when you're playing the banjo. It kind of lifts you up, the plucking of it and the, just the sound of it. In the same way, um, I, I've been told this, but I've also tried this before. Do you know that when you intentionally smile before you make a telephone call, and then when you smile, make yourself smile while you're talking to someone, um, you will come across more positively? It's just hard to be mean and smile at the same time. Uh, now, not all things can be fixed this way, I know. You know, when we confront a difficult issue in our lives or in the church or in government, Often it requires confrontation and discussion and, and wrestling. And there will be good and bad. There will be gain and loss in negotiations. But it's the heart of the matter that does count. It's, it's, it's the basic you know, premise for an issue that 
for our, that we're dealing with? Is it well-being and the good of others, or is it out of selfishness and greed? And so we just have to check ourselves with that a little bit. In the end, uh, there's a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote that I love that says, who you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. And for me, that means that people hear your actions just as much as your words, sometimes even more. And so if they know you care, they might be more willing to take the bad with the good and to listen more. So when we contemplate today and during the season of Lent, the actions of Jesus, we see the care and the love of God seeking to confront injustice and darkness with compassion and light and calling us to do the same. And we're told that it makes all the difference. Jesus says, why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say stand up and walk? Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of this day, for your Holy Spirit that lives in us and guides us in a way that helps us to use compassion instead of uh, negativity to address those things around us. But it requires strength that you also provide. So give that to us today and bless us on our way. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, grace and peace. Have a great day.